Jeff has a great story because he tried to start his own firm before. And what year did you try to start your own firm the first time? Uh, 2014. 2014. Okay. And what did you get up to in sales on an annual basis when you quit that time and start, started the business? <laughs> I don't know if you can call it annual sales. Um, I think I was making like 500 bucks a month for about three <laughs> months. And then I went back to work for uh, another public accounting firm. Okay. And that was in the 2014 timeframe. And now the other great part about Jeff's story is it's, you know, when he came back, you actually joined up with us. And then right after you joined up with us, you got fired, right? Yeah. And then everybody went in the group and said, congratulations, Jeff, you got fired. You got fired. And why did they do that? Because somehow they could see this, I guess, right? Goodness. And so I guess walk us through, uh, first off, how old are you? I'm 37 years old. Okay. And what are the current services that you're offering? So we are just doing uh, tax planning and tax preparation and kind of quarterly planning, maintenance, and implementation with our clients. Okay. And so what was happening right when you first joined up with us? Yeah. I mean, at that time, October, 2017, I, uh, you know, I was let go from my job and, um, you know, luckily for me, I had already started kind of the process of next level firms of doing, making LinkedIn connections and sending out emails. So I was in the process of gaining clients at that point. Um, and then, you know, I also had people that had reached out to me while I was working at the firm to come aboard. And so basically what I did uh, is I kind of set up some meetings uh, off of those folks um, because I had their contact information and their emails and stuff in, in my cell phone because that's how I had originally met them just kind of, uh, you know, on the street or through referrals, through referral partners and everything. Uh, so I had, you know, the opportunity to at least, you know, make a little extra money, um, you know, when I started in October of 2017. And one of the things I didn't cover with Julie, but I wanted to in a couple of cases here, what you guys will see on these charts when I had these uh, people put these together is look at how many times, and you'll see this, if I go back on Julie's even, you'll see this as well. Andrew, I think um, you have to share your screen. Uh, oh, am I not no? sharing this one? No, I am. Yeah, here we go. If you go back on Julie's, you, you, you can see it, right? You guys can see Julie Harris is here? Yeah. And so yeah. when you look here, whenever they hit bottom parts, it tends to be right before they peak out, right? So I wanted to ask you that as well. I mean, obviously we've got this chart here. What happened in November? Because remember, this is before COVID. So in December, you hit 84 a month. Is that right? Yeah. So that was before we lived in this new reality we live in. So this isn't even COVID-related work. Why the dip and how was the dip? Remember, you, you had a, a reduction in sales going all the way back to September 2018. So almost a year, but at the same point, that catapulted you to bigger than what you'd ever – so what ha tell us about this story here. Yeah, so – you know, I think we had talked maybe in um, August or September about kind of my next phase and my next step being, you know, I need to bring in a salesperson to handle the volume of appointments. So last year, we talked to 648 real estate agents and brokers, which is, I did that on my own without a salesperson. And so uh, the volume was there, the appointments were there, we needed a salesperson. So I intentionally um, slowed the growth of the firm so I could go in and find a salesperson and train her. Um, you know, I spent two full weeks with her training her. And then I left on Thanksgiving break and just threw her to the wolves and she made money while I was out. And that was the first time I've ever made money when I was out on vacation um, doing that. Well, what that allowed me to do is I was able to hand off the sales appointments really to her where she was do probably doing 75% of the new prospects. I was doing 25% and I went in and I rinsed the business in December. And at that time, um, I began putting together packaging for my clients uh, because I was getting a lot of complaints that my clients felt like they were being nickeled and dimed every time we chatted, that every opportunity was an upsell opportunity because you know that's kind of what we've been taught. So we went ahead and we put together kind of an all of car package. People could just pay as they go, or they could uh, work with us and do a quarterly package where they meet with us quarterly, they get their tax prep done. Um, and typically we meet with them about six times a year with that package. And then we have an annual package where we meet with them about 14 times a year 
and do planning and everything. And so at that point, I gave them an, an incentive in December with like 10% off if they decided to pay the year in full in December. And we had a lot of clients reach out and do that. And then my salesperson really hit her stride. I think she sold about 11 units that month. And it, it all just started kind of falling into place. And we really started finding a formula, um, you know, that would work going forward. So now, you know, we'll do another rinse probably in December, but we got rid of a lot of our headache clients and our low paying clients. So you had to get rid of people to be able to go to the next level and change the pricing, the packaging. Yeah. And I think I talked to Julie about that before this as well. She said a very similar thing that the bottoms were related to rinsing moments. Um, okay. And I guess one big thing that I think is unique about you is your niche is real estate agents. And a lot of people say, well, these small businesses, they're not going to pay. They're too slow. Like I get the feel sometimes like, well, so somebody's doing 100, 200,000 sales. They can't pay for tax planning. Okay. It's not possible, right? Now you built your entire business on real estate agents mostly, even more than the brokers and the investors, right? So how do you get people that are smaller to pay? You know, I, I think it's really uh, about the value um, that we show them. Uh, you know, the slide decks have been tremendous. Oh, did he break up a bit? I think it's fine now. Okay, so you, the slide decks have been tremendously valuable in showing uh, those people, the value. And I think it's really about connecting um, with them. And, you know, it, it's not necessarily uh, the prospects are bad or anything. If they're able, willing to get on a call with you, there's an opportunity to sell them. And so you have to be able to connect with them and find, uh, you know, that opportunity. And, you know, we're willing to, you know, pretty much talk to anyone now we've gotten better in our process about qualifying those leads before they get on the phone with us. We're not wasting as much time. Um, but I think it's, you know, I think as long as there's a small business out there, there's an opportunity to sell them. Okay. And uh, real quick, I skipped this one question here was, what do you estimate your salary and net profit will be in 2020? Uh, I estimate it'll be about 400,000. Okay. And what has made you stay in the group? Because you've been with us for a while as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the opportunity to have a community of like-minded individuals who are trying to grow their business, they share similar, um, I guess, values, and they want to be able to, um, you know, just being able to network and, you know, get that information from them. And, you know, honestly, I, I'm just truly grateful for the opportunity to be uh, in this group and, um, you know, seeing you guys pivot in kind of this COVID world and, and help us with that. It, it's just been a tremendous value to, to myself and my family. And, um, you know, so I'm really grateful for that. And, you know, a lot of people don't have that opportunity right now. I mean, you see that with the unemployment rates. hundred percent. Now. So one thing I skipped over here as well is between now and 70, what do you want your biggest year in sales to be? 37 yeah, years old, you said, right? 37 years old, probably a, a million a month. So we'll go with 12 million. Love it. And what is the number one problem today, like in the business right now? Yeah, I mean, the number one problem today is I'm mainly doing the service delivery work. And so it's taken me away from sales. Uh, and I actually enjoy doing the sales a lot more than I do the service delivery. And I haven't been able to find a, a great accountant to join our team yet. And, you know, I think, Andrew, you told me in October of 2018, Jeff, you got to go out and hire an accountant. And I, I've been trying, and, it, and it's been a real tough challenge to find the right person to bring into the organization. So, you know, we've got active job ads, and we're looking for people. And I think that's going to see our next step in growth to consistently being over 100,000 uh, a month. You know, in April, we hit 100,000. You know, that was the first time in the business. Consistent basis. Love it. So we did get a couple of questions and I'm going to go through one here. Um, let's see. Anthony says, FYI, we didn't follow the rinse program, meaning I didn't go high enough following the guideline. I still need to rinse because I didn't have it. Okay. Jeff, can you talk about your process of pre-qualifying leads and if your best month of 84,000 is monthly recurring? So he is not all monthly recurring. So when you look at this 83 and then these other months above 75, most of that is not monthly recurring, correct? 
Correct. So my business is mainly, our main product is tax planning. If people don't buy some sort of tax planning product, we will not take them in as a client. So, um, you know, what I kind of realized is I was getting burnt out with starting every single month at zero um, because it's like you work so hard every month and sell all these tax plans and then bam, you're at zero uh, the first of every month. And so we've kind of built in um, a quarterly or monthly planning structure to continue to maintain the existing client base. And so maybe they'll pay us, um, you know, $6,000 uh, for the year or 1500 bucks a quarter so that we have some monthly reoccurring revenue. And, and that's really been a game changer. So a lot of the operating expenses are, are taken care of uh, each month when we uh, come in that do the door the first month, uh, first of the month, which is really nice. So you look at it as kind of like rebills and then new cash every month. Yeah. Instead it, of it, like a Julie Harris where she's just looking at her monthly recurring revenue from, you're looking at here's what's in my AR to hit, and then I've got to generate new cash and create more AR. Exactly. Got it. And uh, okay, this one's from Kathleen. I assume you're handling clients from multiple states. How do you handle potential licensing issues from each state when recommending strategies? Not every state will allow agents to be S-corps. Uh, do you make the advertisement and let them seek out licensing issues? Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a great question. So I'm a, an enrolled agent, so I can practice in all 50 states when it comes to preparation um, and you know advising on tax law. Now, each real estate board does have um, you know, requirements uh, regarding S corps and different things. And, you know, you have to be aware of that. Uh, most of the states that we're in, we see a lot of duplicates, um, you know, our top four states are the top four most populous states. And so it's the similar issues that we deal with uh, on a monthly basis. So it's not like we have to reinvent the wheel or anything. Love it. And um, one, one question I'll do before we wrap this one up is, so you hit the 84 in that December. Now, how much of a hit were you going to see with COVID and how much did, were you able to recover that by changing the packaging and the pricing? Yeah, great, great question. So, you know, up before COVID in March, we were on track to probably do about $125,000 in sales. And so that next week when COVID hit, we did seven grand in sales. That was in March? In March. So, yeah. so you know, we're cruising along. Everything's going well. Oh, did he break up there as well again, I think Amanda? He broke up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I got it. So you know, I, I'm planning my vacation to the Bahamas, and then COVID hits, and I do seven grand in sales, and I'm like, oh no, what, what, uh, what's going on here? And um, you know, so the business dr dropped dramatically. I mean, to go from you know basically thirty three thousand a week down to seven thousand a week, that was that was scary. And uh, we got on a call together. And I think I was kind of moping around like, ah, I don't want to change what I'm doing and kind of complaining about the whole thing. And, and you gave me kind of a kick in the butt. And that, you know, I think that was March 31st. And I was like at 59,000 in sales. So that was like three o'clock in the afternoon. By the end of the day, I think we we're up to close to 75 grand in sales. So um, whatever you said worked. And then, um, you know, that week we did 60 grand in sales. So, and that's my highest you know, week in the company ever. So, um, and then we've kind of just kept that trajectory. And then, you know, in the last two weeks or so, we've really seen people come back around on tax planning. Uh, in the last two days, we've already picked up five new clients and I expect that to continue to grow. 